Nashville Predators, after four games played on the season, have fallen to eighth in the Central Division. Last place, that is, at this time, with a record of one and three. They have just two points on the season. The good news, the silver lining aspect of the standings at this moment in time is that even uh, with the Predators being in last place, they're only four points behind the first place Colorado Avalanche. The Avs moved to 3-0 and after last night's action, now have six points on the season and truly truly do look like a very, very strong candidate to run away with the division this year. Uh, the Minnesota Wild are currently in second place, uh, tied with the Chicago Blackhawks with four points. And then you'll find the St. Louis Blues and the Dallas Stars by way of losing their lead late in Vegas last night. Dallas Stars fell in the shootout, so they also have three points. And then you'll find the Arizona Coyotes and the National Predators with two points. The Preds in last place by way of playing the most games in the Central and having be tied for the least amount of points. Now, Moving on to the next game is the sample size and the numbers and the data continues to increase. We'll have, of course, more things to talk about. Now, the Predators' next game in the yo-yo schedule at the beginning of the season takes place on the road. They have a record of 0-2 and two on the road. They have scored nine goals in the season. They have given up 14. Now, after the Nashville Predators take on the New York Rangers in Madison Square Garden, which is their next game, they will be back home on the yo-yo one more time, but this time for the first time, all season, they will play more than one game in a row at home. Saturday, they'll be home to face off against the San Jose Sharks. Tuesday versus Vancouver. And then a slight break, just a couple of days, the 28th of October versus the Toronto Maple Leafs. Then lengthy road trip, as we always know, happens at the beginning of November. It starts this year on Halloween, and it's in Vancouver. So the Preds will play the Canucks two times in three games, and then off to Seattle on the second. And then the, the road trip continues, and you don't want to know where they're going after Seattle. Uh, when it comes to the New York Rangers, which is the National Purse next opponent, it's the first of two regular season meetings between these two interconference squads. 12-2 will be the next time the Preds face off against the New York Rangers. That's when the Rangers will be here at Bridgestone Arena. Now, the Rangers on the season have a record of 2-1. and one. That's good for four points. They are third in the Atlantic Division. They're 1-0 and oh on home ice. That victory came against the Coyotes. They have a plus three goal differential on the season. Now, Again, only three games, so let's just recap what the Rangers have done so far. They opened the season with a 5-1 to one win at Buffalo, but then looked absolutely lifeless in Columbus against the Blue Jackets in a 5-3 to three loss on the 14th of October. And then the 16th, when they opened up their home schedule at Madison Square Garden, a lot more life, a lot more energy versus the Arizona Coyotes. Uh, the score, not necessarily indicative of how the Rangers played. The first period, the Rangers were fantastic in this 2-1 to one victory. Second period, kind of flat. Third period, another really good, strong game. And these two teams got after each other physically, and it lasted well after the final horn in the third period. So the Arizona Coyotes, clearly a rambunctious team coming from the Central Division going to Madison Square Garden. The Rangers are going to be prepared for another rambunctious team in Nashville coming in next. For the Rangers, uh, their next game after the Preds, just to give you an indication of what they're setting up for, will take place Saturday, and that will be on the road in Seattle. Now, for the National Purpose, they do have one injury to report, and it is Shen still day-to-day, -day, lower body injury, no report on a time frame. No report, honestly, since the initial Shen is going to be out day-to-day, -day, lower body injury. That's the only thing we've heard. It's, it's been suspiciously quiet three games later, a week later, that we don't uh, seem to know anything more about the potential time frame for Shen's return, but he has not been at practice, and he's certainly uh, not been in the lineup. Uh, NHL ranks and matchups between these two teams. For the Preds, it may be early in the season, and uh, I know there's a lot of flux going on, but man, some of these rankings are not where you want them to be at any point in time, uh, especially around the special teams. Let's start at the top of the list. Goals for Preds, 2.25 per game is only 24th in the NHL. Not great. The New York Rangers, 3.33 goals per game is 14th in the NHL. Now, for the Predators, giving up 3.50 goals against per game. That number cannot remain that way. That's 22nd in the league and, of course, skewed heavily by what the Edmonton Oilers just did to the National Predators. The Rangers are giving up 2.33 per game. That is 11th best in the NHL. In the shots for category, I'm interested to see how these two teams translate in this because both of these teams piling up shots. The Preds, 36.3 shots per game is third overall in the NHL. 
NHL at this time. The Rangers, 33.7 shots on goal per game, is eighth overall at this point in time in the season. So I'm very curious. That's a lot of shot volume, 70 shots on goal between these two teams per game. I'm very curious uh, to see how that works out at MSG. Shots against the National Person giving up 29.3 per game. That's 14th in league. Rangers giving up 24.3. That is third overall in the NHL. Now, special teams. This is where things are not going well for the Predators in the early part of the season. And I understand there's going to be a flux. There's going to be adjustments. There's going... Well, you're going to have to start making those adjustments pretty quickly. The power play converting at 11.8% is 22nd overall in the NHL. The raw data on that is 2 of 17. 2 for 17 on the season. New York Rangers converting at 30%. That's 7th best in the league. They've converted 3 times out of 10 total opportunities on the season. Now, the penalty kill is where the National Purs are really, really, truly struggling. Now, the power play... I, I, I can understand new coach, new system, new players getting to know each other's the power play, not connecting right away. I understand. But the penalty kill, penalty killing is the same. It's the same at every level, everywhere. Uh, it, it is maintain your discipline, stay in the shot lanes and uh, make sure you take care of business out there. And for the national person, they have plenty of good quality, experienced veteran penalty killers. So to see their PK killing off only 60% at this point and giving up six power play goals through four games. They're giving up more than one power play goal per game. 31st out of 32 teams in the NHL. The Rangers penalty kills giving up two power play goals in the season. They're killing off 77.8%. They are good for 23rd overall in the league at this point in time. When it comes to the individual statistics for both of these teams, on the New York Rangers side of things, they may have only skated in three games, but they have four four players that would be leading the Nashville Predators in scoring at this moment in the season. Chris Kreider's off to an incredible start for the Rangers. Four goals, one assist for five points. Panarin always delivers one goal, three assists for four points. Fox has four assists for four points. Zibanejad, four assists for four points. And Gustafson, just to show you where the drop-off starts, one goal, one assist for two points. Just start and Net has played all of their games, just like UC Soros has started all of the Predators games. Shesterkin is 2-1, a 904 state percentage, a 2.38 goals against average. And he's also already faced a penalty shot early on the season against the Arizona Coyotes just the other night, late in the third period at MSG. Came up with the big stop while the Rangers were leading by one goal. The stats over on the Nashville Predators side of the ledger, Colton Sisson still leads the team in scoring. His three goals is tops on the team and total of three points is also tied for tops on the team. O'Reilly at one goal and two assists for three points. Forsberg, zero goals, three assists for three points. Parson, two goals, zero assists for two points. And Novak, two goals, no assists for two points. UC Soros' numbers took a significant hit against the Edmonton Oilers. Uh, his record falls to 1-3 and three on the season. Save percentage, 887 goals against 3.41. Has that one shutout against the Seattle Kraken, uh, but now has lost to Tampa Bay, Boston, and of course the Edmonton Oilers last night at Bridgestone Arena. So for UC Soros, uh, he's not the fastest starter in the season. This is not on UC Soros necessarily, but we do typically see in October his save percentage dips below nine and his goals against goes above three. That's typically where the switch flips and UC Soros starts to take over for the season. This is a little bit of a different circumstance than previous seasons, though. But uh, UC Soros, Philip Forsberg, their trends are continuing on into this season under yet another coach for them. So that's got you all set up for the Nashville Predators in New York to take on the Rangers at Madison Square Garden. Very curious to see if the Preds can put together a solid road performance. Uh, they played okay in Boston, but of course, power play penalty kill awful same thing can be said in Tampa they played okay at stretches I need to see them put together a good road game at Madison Square Garden regardless of the results I need to see the Nashville Predators put together a strong strong hockey game it will be the fifth game of the regular season for the Preds and they're going into New York to face off against their fifth consecutive team that was in the playoffs from last season tough Tough schedule to start the season, but for the Nashville Purs, it's been a good measuring stick, and there's an awful lot that we can talk about. Let's start by going back. It's painful. Let's do it, though. We got to recap what happened between the Nashville Purs and the Edmonton Oilers. Well, listen, if you if you love McDavid and Dreisaitl and the Edmonton Oilers, as many people at Bridgestone Arena last night seem to, uh, you're going to love this conversation. Uh, if, you, if you follow the Predators day-to-day, -day, and that's why you come to this show, this uh, might be a painful couple of minutes, but we will try to talk about some good things that the Predators did, and they did do a couple of good things. Regardless of results, 
Results are not the ultimate truth indicator. I think we all know that right now. Let's go back. Let's get the Rebirth Sports full game recap in, and then we'll do some analysis, and we'll talk about it. We'll figure it out, and we'll get you set for the next game against the Rangers. It's time for the Rebirth Sports full game recap, and it's coming up right after this on the Renegades of Puck Podcast. Hockey 